today on Hot Thai Kitchen, we are making Pad Thai. สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. I'm so excited about today's episode because we are remaking the most popular Hot Thai Kitchen video. We are revisiting Pad Thai. Now. Since my first pad thai video a few years ago, I've learned quite a lot, and so today I'm ready to share with you a new and improved recipe. So today I'll share with you the basic traditional pad thai recipe, and then next week I will share some variations to the basic recipe that are actually quite popular in Thailand for those of you who like to, you know, switch things up a little bit. So first, let's take a look at the most important part of the recipe: the sauce. Now, pad thai sauce is deceptively simple. There are really only three main ingredients in it: the sweet, the sour, and the salty. 35 grams of palm sugar, finely chopped. This is about three tightly packed tablespoons. A quarter cup of tamarind juice, often labeled as tamarind concentrate. Two tablespoons of, of course, fish sauce. Oh, and don't forget three tablespoons of water. So every brand of fish sauce, every brand of tamarind concentrate is going to be different. So start out with the proportions that I gave you, and then you can taste and adjust later for next time, just to make it suit your brand. First, I want to talk about how to work with palm sugar. If you're going to measure it, you just want to shave it thinly, like this. After you get this, you just want to run through it again. Horizontally, and then this is the stage. If you're measuring it by tablespoons rather than by weights, because we need 35 grams, you want to get it here before you start packing your tablespoons. So with the palm sugar, I'm going to put it in a heat-proof glass. To this, I'm going to add our three tablespoons of water. Now, I used to cook my sauce stovetop. And then I discovered that I don't have to. I can just microwave it, and I have one less dirty pot to deal with. So just 30 seconds. Okay. So at this point, it's not going to be all dissolved, but that's okay. Just give it a stir, and then if there's any big chunks, you can just press it down with the back of your spoon. It'll dissolve eventually. And to this, we're going to add our tamarind. Any brand will do. Although I have worked with one brand that turned my Noodles really sticky and gummy, and I don't know what it is about that tamarind. It might be some sort of a thickener that they use. So if that happens to you, uh, just switch brand. Fish sauce. This is our only salting agent in this recipe, so you need a good quality fish sauce, or your dish will suffer. First, you want a fresh bottle, not something that's been open for six months, because the flavor does deteriorate over time. And also, use a good brand. Some good brands that I've used is Three Crabs. Uh, squid and tiparot, all of those are are usable ones. And if you feel like this is a little bit too fishy for you, some people do a combination of fish sauce and salt. So if you want to do one a one and a half tablespoon of fish sauce and then a quarter teaspoon of salt instead, you can do that as well. But I like this one. So there, there's our sauce. And the great thing is, you can make this in advance and then keep it in the fridge. It'll last you a really long time until you're ready to go. So now that our sauce is done, let's take a look at the rest of our ingredients. Four ounces of dry rice noodles, eight to ten shrimp, or as many as you'd like, one small head of shallot, thinly sliced, two cloves garlic, chopped, one tablespoon of dry shrimp, one piece of pressed tofu, cut into small pieces, half a teaspoon of chili flakes. Or a little less, or a lot more, up to you. A scant quarter cup of chopped sweet preserved daikon radish, two eggs, two and a half cups bean sprouts, one cup garlic chives, cut into two-inch pieces, quarter cup crushed roasted peanuts, and one lime. So let's take a look at our noodles. Pad Thai noodles come in two major forms: dry and fresh. So this is the dry one. You're familiar with this. You can find this in the dry goods aisle. 
The fresh one is usually found in the refrigerated section. It's soft and pliable, it usually comes in a shrink wrap package. But today I'm gonna use the dry one because it's more widely available. Most of you can get it. If you're going to use the fresh one, the process of how to work with it is a little bit different. So I'll include the instructions on how to work with those in the written recipe on the website. We want to soak this anywhere between an hour to up to overnight, just in plain cold water. What you want to look for when they're done soaking is they should be white. So they'll go from sort of translucent to this white color and completely soft and pliable. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you can soak them for several hours, but I found from my experience that the longer you soak them, the less chewy they tend to be. So if you like noodles chewy, just an hour, an hour and a half till they turn white and then drain it and then keep it until you're ready to use it. So you can do this a day ahead of time if you'd like. Okay, so those are our noodles. So the next thing, let's talk about some of the unfamiliar ingredients. So first, our preserved radish. Now it's this attractive, appetizing looking thing right here. In Thai, we call it chai po, and it's daikon radish that's been salted and sugared until it's dried up and looks like this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it up, and I just put this through a food processor, but you can use your knife and mince it. Sometimes it comes already chopped, and what this adds, it's chewy, salty, sweet little chunks run throughout our noodles. It's gonna make it a lot more fun and flavorful. Now, this is important. There are two types of preserved radish. Oh, by the way, comes in a bag like this. There's a salty kind and the sweet kind. You have to get the sweet kind because the salty kind is incredibly salty and it's gonna be, it's gonna make your dish way too salty and it should say sweet on the bag. If it doesn't say sweet on the bag, assume it is salty. Okay, so there's that. Next, we've got our dried shrimp. They're pretty much like shrimp jerky. That's what it is. And it adds a real nice boost of umami. So what you wanna do is rinse it first to get rid of, sometimes you have sand and get rid of extra saltiness too. So that's been rinsed and I've drained that off. And I'm going to also chop it uh, roughly, you don't have to, a lot of people don't if they're already using small dry trim, but I like the dry trim to really be well distributed. I want that shrimpy boost in every bite of my pad thai, so I'm just gonna give that a rough chop. There you go. The next thing I wanna talk about is tofu, pressed tofu. This is as firm as tofu gets, it's like cheese. Now the reason why we like pressed tofu for this is because it won't break or crumble when you toss and stir fry it. If, uh, sometimes it's called bean curd, sometimes it comes marinated, which is okay to use. If you cannot find this, what you can do, do is take extra firm tofu, cut it into pieces like this, like we're gonna use it, dry it off real well, and then fry them until they sort of firm up the outside, starts to have a little bit of a nice golden color, and that, the act of frying, will dry them off and firm them up and prevent them from breaking. So either one will work. Finally, garlic chives. So garlic chives are like flat green onions and they taste halfway between a garlic and an onion. If you cannot find this, you can also use green onions. Garlic scapes will probably work as well. Garlic shoots or flowering chives. A decent substitute. Okay, so there's that. And that's pretty much all of our ingredients. Everything else is straightforward. If you have any questions about other ingredients I didn't talk about, you can message me on Facebook. Now, before we go to cook, we want to organize our mise en place and make sure we put all the things that need to go in at the same time together to make it extra efficient. Combine the radish, shallots, garlic, dry shrimp, tofu, and chili flakes. In another bowl, combine the bean sprouts, garlic chives, and half of your crushed peanuts. And now do one final check that you've got your shrimp, your noodles, your sauce, and the eggs, and we're ready to go cook. As you can see, everything is very well organized. That's what you need or you're gonna be running around for stuff. We're gonna cook the shrimp first in a wok or a big saute pan. It doesn't matter, you don't absolutely need a wok for this, but it's nice. Get some, a little bit of vegetable oil, really, really hot. Go in with our shrimp. I want to cook the shrimp separately because I want to be able to, be able to control how long they cook so they don't overcook. And now I'm just going to not move them until they're halfway done. And the reason for that is if I don't move them, there's a good chance they're going to brown and develop some really nice flavor. 
Yeah. See how nicely brown that is? It's also a benefit of using larger shrimp. You buy yourself more time before they overcook so they have a chance to brown. It's gonna sear the top a little bit. So I'm gonna take that out and set it aside. Nice. Okay, next we're gonna add a little bit more oil and we're using the same pan so we're getting some extra shrimpy flavor. Don't be shy with oil. Uh, stuff actually absorbs quite a bit of oil in here and if you don't have enough, you might have a little bit of a lubrication issue. Mmm, I can smell the shrimp. Go in with our bowl of stuff. Saute until the garlic starts to brown. The tofu will start to develop some color. What's happening is all the aromatics, the dry shrimp, the garlic, the shallots, and the radish is infusing their flavor into the oil, which is going to be the vehicle that's going to transfer all the flavor all over the noodles. We're going to go in with the noodles. And then the sauce. And we added water to the sauce precisely so that we don't have to blanch the noodles ahead of time. So the noodles can cook in the pan. So at this point you want to keep stirring because the liquid is naturally going to be at the bottom. So you want to keep flipping the noodles so that it the liquid gets absorbed evenly. I like to switch my weapon at this point. It's just easier to use tongs with noodles, I find. Now we're just at this point going to cook it until all the liquid disappears. And if my calculation is correct, at that point the noodles will be perfectly cooked. So noodles more or less dry now. I mean it's still got a little bit to go but we're not done so we're good as long as there's nothing pooling at the bottom. We're going in with the eggs. Scramble it a little bit. Now I'm going to just swirl it. And then let it set a little bit. Then I'm going to put my noodles on top of the eggs. If you have a high BTU stove, this goes a lot faster. But it'll work on anything. Let it set for like 10 15 seconds. And then let's see. Now you go in with all your veggies. Now I know this looks like a lot of bean sprouts and garlic chives, but they're actually quite important. It's important that you add a lot of it because otherwise it's all noodles and it's very heavy. I'm going to turn the heat off now. And the bean sprouts will add a nice crunch to it. So it'll actually help make it a more pleasant meal so you don't feel like you're so heavy by the end of it. And that's it, that's done. Okay, let's plate it over here. So this makes two very generous portions. Uh, three, I'm not a big eater so I can usually do three out of it. Now when you plate this, be careful. The little bits and pieces, the uh, tofu and small things don't like to come up with the noodles so you make sure you distribute all that stuff well. Standard garnish. Just put some extra bean sprouts on the side. Plenty of bean sprouts in here but some people really like fresh bean sprouts on the side. Little extra garlic chives. There. And always, always, always a little slice of lime. Now, in Thailand, we like to cut our lime like this because it's a really easy way to squeeze. So, right here. What else needs to go on here? Oh, the shrimp, of course. So, with this size, this is a 1620 shrimp, which means there's 16 to 20 shrimp to a pound. It's quite large. So, maybe just three is good. See how it's nice and well caramelized? Ooh. And then finally, the other half of our peanuts going on top 
In Thailand, they like to put a little chili, extra chili flakes on the side so people can kind of drag it in as they need. This slime, you want to make sure you use it. It's not a garnish. It really brightens everything up, adds a, a zingy freshness to it. So you can always, of course, taste before you squeeze, but I know that I'm going to like a lot of lime. So, and that is it. So this is our basic traditional Pad Thai. Next week, wait for the variations. So if you like to switch this up, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be alerted when I post the next video. And for the full written recipe of this one, you can visit hotthaikitchen.com. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.